Hello, my name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I'm showing you some hidden, sort of lesser known features in iOS 26. I think you guys are really gonna like this video. Let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump right in. All right, let's start off with a bang. Number one is very cool, but it's very hidden. If you don't know where to look, you might just miss it. In iOS 26, on your iPhone now, you actually can have a charge time estimator. That's right, your iPhone can now tell you how long until it'll reach a certain level. So I have a power cable right here. If I go ahead and plug in my iPhone, you can see it's now charging. But if I go ahead and lock my phone and then tap the screen, you can see up here on the date, if I lock it and then turn it back on again, it's gonna say 57% charge and it said 21 minutes until 80%. Now it doesn't tell you how long until 100%. I don't understand why it does this. And another thing that kind of bugs me is it disappears after like two or three seconds. You can see it goes away really fast and goes back to the date. But if you're looking in the right spot and you're able to read it fast enough, your iPhone can now tell you exactly how long until you get to 80%. I just wish they would add the option to see how long until 100%. Next at number two is going to allow you to take much sharper photos on your iPhone. The number one reason I see for bad photos on everyone's iPhone is the lens on the back of the phone is smudged up and dirty. Luckily in iOS 26, the system can now remind you to clean your camera. So inside of settings, if you scroll down and click on camera right here, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see we have an option that says lens cleaning hints. And if you turn this on, if your iPhone detects that you have a very smudgy camera lens, it is going to show you on the top that you need to clean your camera. Now I did smudge up my camera, but in previous takes of this clip, I wasn't able to get it to work. So if I go ahead and open up my camera, uh, you can see nothing pops up. Luckily, I do have a screenshot of what this looks like. So if you do have a dirty lens, if you have lens cleaning hints turned on, it's gonna say this if you have a dirty camera. Moving along to number three, this one is super cool. It lives inside of photos. Now in iOS 26, you can make literally any photo in your photo library 3D. Doesn't matter if you took it on a camera that wasn't an iPhone, you can click one button and make that photo 3D. So here inside of photos, you can see here's a photo of my cat. If I click on the screen, you'll see we have a button here at the top right. It's very small, but if you click on it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna analyze the spatial scene of that photo and in a matter of seconds, it's gonna make it 3D. Doesn't look like it did anything right here. However, if I take my iPhone off of the mount, as I move my phone around, you can see it looks 3D. And it looks like it even comes through on video quite well also. And it really makes it feel like you have sort of a hologram on your iPhone. This is especially fun to do if you have really, really old photos. Like I have photos back from 2007 on my iPhone and those were shot on a really old point and shoot camera. And when I turned on the 3D spatial scene, it really brought me back to that moment and it felt like I was reliving it for the first time. So it's really, really cool. I don't know how Apple is doing this without any depth information, but it works really well on pretty much any photo. So I definitely recommend trying this on your iPhone with iOS 26. Next up is iOS 26 now has an all new power mode. So you guys are already probably familiar with low power mode. I turn it on just like this every single day whenever my iPhone gets below 20%. You can see it's on because your battery symbol turns yellow. However, I don't really like doing this because it really makes my iPhone feel slow and choppy. Luckily in iOS 26, there's an all new way to extend your battery life. So inside of settings, you wanna click on battery and then click on power mode. You can see we now have adaptive power. And it says when your iPhone battery is higher than normal, iPhone can make small performance adjustments to extend your battery life, including lowering the brightness of the display or allowing some activities to take a little bit longer. It also says low power mode may automatically turn on at 20%. So if I were you, I would simply turn this on and see if your battery life gets any better. If you notice your iPhone is getting slow or it's being laggy or choppy, maybe go ahead and turn it off. But it's nice that there is a way to extend your iPhone's battery without going into the drastic measure of low power mode. Okay, moving right along, this next feature is very, very small, but it's one of those features I've been waiting for so long for Apple to add into iOS. You can now change the length of your snooze in the alarm clock. So here, if I go ahead and open up clock, if I make a new alarm, you can see here underneath snooze, we can now change the snooze duration. I have no idea why the default snooze is nine minutes. It just makes no sense. Let me know in the comments if you know why. But here, if we click on it, we can go all the way down from one minute to 15 minutes. 
I think I'm gonna keep mine at 15 minutes because that sounds nice. Six extra minutes of sleep. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna change this. Safari also has a pretty nice update in iOS 26. You can see it has a nice new redesign and the menu bar at the bottom is now floating and it looks pretty good with this new liquid glass design as I scroll through the website here. But in iOS 26, you can actually customize the look of your tab bar here at the bottom. If we go ahead and open up settings, then scroll all the way down to apps, then you wanna find Safari, click on it right here, then scroll down and you can see we have a few different options. So I believe Compact is actually the default one. If I go back into Safari, you can see this is the default iOS 26 one. For me, it doesn't give me enough information. So I went ahead and changed it to this one, which gives me now the tab button, which I like having right here. We can also change it to top bottom. So if I click on this, you can see I now have my controls at the bottom and it's gonna give me my web page at the top. This actually looks pretty good as well. So it's nice that we can now customize our look of Safari. Uh, let me know in the comments what you're gonna pick. The next thing I wanna show you isn't really a new feature per se. It's more about the attention to detail in iOS 26. I'm finding that a lot of the animations and the new glassy look really make the iPhone feel a lot more fun and friendly. And I'll show you a few examples. The first one is when you swipe up from your lock screen. So I want you to watch the way the icons float into the home screen. If I swipe up slowly, you can see the icons come in very gently. However, if I give this thing a power swipe, you can see the icons really come into my home screen and bounce around. It just kind of adds that level of fun to your iPhone. On top of that, with Apple adding liquid glass, you're gonna notice this everywhere throughout the system. And as I pull down to go to my notifications, if you watch the edge of the glass panel, you can see it is reflecting the look of the icon and it really makes it look like an actual piece of glass is being pulled down on your iPhone's display. And also on top of this, if you're ever in a menu in iOS where you have a little selector menu here, you can actually drag the buttons and you get this really cool glass bubble looking thing and it's kind of bouncy and kind of fun. I've never seen a phone UI uh, look like this. Uh, the attention to detail here is pretty insane from Apple. iOS 26 also brings an all new option to Control Center, and that is one touch reminders adding. So here in Control Center, I can go ahead and click one button, and just like this, I can now create a new reminder. I use this literally every single day or multiple times per day. I'll show you how to add it right now. If you press and hold in open space, then click on add a control, at the top here, you just wanna search for reminders. It'll show up right here. You can add the toggle just like this. And now whenever you go ahead and click on the button, you can start creating a reminder. And iOS 26 also changes up the behavior of the keyboard a little bit. And you may or may not like this change. So here, if I go to Safari, for example, and I go ahead and start typing, you're gonna see that there actually is kind of a change. And you'll notice that the character is actually not being previewed when I press the key. If you go to your iPhone right now, if it's running iOS 18, when you click on the key, it's actually gonna preview itself and make itself bigger above your finger, but it doesn't do it in iOS 26 by default. If you want it back, I can show you how to turn it on. So go into settings, then click on general, then scroll down and click on keyboard. And you'll see here, it is now an option under feedback. And I have no idea why it was turned off by default. This is gonna annoy a lot of people. But here, if I go ahead and turn it back on, I can now go ahead and start typing again. And now you can see it's now previewing my keys. I think when everyone updates from iOS 18 to iOS 26, everyone is gonna be wondering where this feature is. iOS 26 also brings a really cool new feature to music and it is called Auto Mix. When you have it turned on, as your iPhone goes throughout songs in your library, it's going to do beat matching and stretching of the music to make the two songs that are next to each other match up as they switch. So it's kind of hard to explain unless I play music, which I don't want to do unless I want to get a copyright strike. But you can see here that mixing logo appeared and it slowly fades into the next song. This is really, really cool. And when you're actually listening to music, you're going to notice how the songs are really seamless as they change from one to the other. And if you don't like this, you can turn this off. If you press on the Q button here at the bottom, you can see this button here on the top right is auto mix. You can turn it off just with one click or turn it back on like that. And staying inside of Apple Music for the next one, this one I also use every single day, and it is called Music Pins. You can see here at the top of my library, I have pinned some music. You can do this with any album, any song. All you have to do is press and hold on it, and you'll see we have a new option here to pin it. 
If I click on this, it is now pinned to the top of my Apple Music library. I love this because every now and then a new album comes out and I'm just binge listening to that album every single day in my car. And instead of finding it in my recently added or in my songs list, I can now simply click on that album and I can start listening to it. And to wrap up the video, the final thing I'll show you new in iOS 26 that's sort of a hidden feature is an all new application. So Apple has brought back a dedicated games app. Before it was called Game Center, but now it's just called Games. If you click on it, you can see we have a few different options inside of here. We have a home screen that has a bunch of recommendations for you. We have a link to Apple Arcade if you are subscribed to it. You also have a tab that's going to recommend games that you can play with friends and family. And you also have a tab down here that's going to show a library of all of your games. Now, I don't really play that many games on my iPhone, so I won't be using this, but I know a lot of people who are hardcore mobile gamers on their iPhone, like they have full on controllers and everything. So I feel like this new dedicated games app is going to be really big for them. So that's gonna wrap it up. Let me know in the comments what your favorite thing was I covered in this video. Also, let me know what you think about my new studio. I just recently bought a house I'm no longer renting and I have a brand new fully renovated studio as you probably saw in the intro and with this backdrop. So let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. If you guys want more videos about iOS 26 and Apple stuff in general, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss every time we post. Please drop a like on this video, it helps us out quite a bit. My name is Michael and I'll see you in the next video.